So let's say I do a favor for you, but instead of asking you to pay it back to me, I ask you to pay to somebody else, paying the favor forward. Um, if the next person does the same and, and this continues, we can potentially create a chain, of, a chain of favors that can grow a lot and potentially go around the world. So today I want to tell you a true story that happened to me, but that unfortunately I don't know how it ends. And this is the story about Karim, Ali, myself, and Senia. Uh, Karim helped Ali uh, find a place to sleep when he was visiting Turkey. Ali helped me find a train ticket when I was a bit lost in a train station in Iran. And I helped Senia when she lost her wallet and needed money for a taxi here in Temple Bar. <laughs> so uh, the thing is that we are all connected, but we don't know about this. But we are in the same chain of favors, right? And I don't know how this continues, but it, poten it potentially continues a lot. So that's why we want to create a favor tree, a way to track these chains of favors to visualize them uh, in a fun and easy way. We all do good actions, and, and we want to use this to track them and to track the impact that we can have in the world. Uh, this would make me, for sure, feel really great when you see that your chain travels the world. And, and it would also be a great idea to, to share with your friends, to, to visualize it, and, and it can also potentially be sort of a, of a game, right? So I'm going to show you a little demo. Let's say that somebody tells you about Favor Street, you never, you never went there. So when you go there, you'll see an animation that will probably try to explain this, this concept in an easy way. And it is as easy as just paying your favors forward, asking somebody else to pay it forward as well, track these chains of, of favors, and then see how much you impact uh, the world, right? You can see here that you can sign up either with your Facebook account, let's say Twitter as well, or you can register in the site. This is my profile. I'm not JC, but anyway. So on the, on the right side, you'll see the visualization part of, the, of this. Let's say I click on Michael because this is one chain that I started with a favor that I did to Michael. You will see the chain growing and I want to expand because I want to see all the favors. In this case, it's a chain of five. If I don't like the tree, I can also see a map if my chain was lucky enough to travel to other countries or a calendar. On the left side of the screen, you're going to see the interaction part. So let's say I do a new favor, I start a new chain. Very similar to Twitter, you just put it here, you put the name of the person, and you share it. This is you start a new chain, but what happens if I need to pay a favor of somebody else? Here you can see that two people did a favor to me that I didn't, I didn't, pay, I didn't pay yet, so I need to pay them, so, sorry, there. Now we have the two <coughs> pending favors. It's the same process, very simple, very straightforward. I just click on, on, on Tanai, who did a favor to me, and create the new action. This new action will be related to this and will continue the chain. Roland made dinner. I made dinner for him, so yeah. <laughs> so after you post it, this will be shared in Facebook and Twitter, hopefully letting more people know about it and bringing them to the site. So I give the mic to Federico. Yes, we were curious to know if this is something that our user base would actually use. And we had 53 answers to do two surveys in English and Spanish around the world. And actually, 90% love the idea, so it's a clear idea, and the 94% like the idea, and 85% would push for you with sharing with friends. And they said, I do almost 10 good action per month, but there, I have no recognition. So, what's the business model? Um, I think the user, the user base is the key. So, we do want to leave it open, so we want users to decide what's going to be our monetization strategy because there are so many ways and there is so much potential in this website that we don't want to force anybody. Oh well, yeah, we have two ideas. And one can be internal currency that you can exchange for discounts. And another one can be thank you vouchers. So Nico does something good for me and I say, Nico, I will pay you a beer and then I will never pay it. So I give him a voucher to go here to the salatories and have a beer, and I will pay forward the favor to another person. So we have a pretty strong team, and actually the value added here is that we do believe that this can really change the world. Thank you very much.
I have very mixed emotions about this because uh, on, the, on the one hand, it's, uh, it's a kind of interesting idea, but on the other hand, it's quite sad to think you're, um, you're trying to validate your favorites, right? Because uh, it kind of goes against the whole ethos. Of it. But um, so tell me about how you validate, uh, how you validate a favorite. Somebody, is the other person does it? Or how, how does, does that work? Like, validate? What do you mean, sorry? I mean, how, how do you know that you actually made the dinner and he agrees that you made the dinner? Okay. Um, so like if, if somebody does a favor to me, and then I just say that I did something good for him, but in the end I don't, the chain will end there. So there's no point in lying about it because the chain will die anyway. There will be many chains that will die, but there will be many more chains that will die. Just a question that I would have, um, and again, I don't have any scientific basis for saying this, but um, there are plenty of specific instances out there where um, people do good things, um, but when they're asked to pay for them or to pay for something that, that, uh, that they liked, um, where they're given a choice, in essence, about how much they would like to pay for something that they like. There's a fair bit of research I think out there that says that initially people might pay at the start and then when the idea takes hold, they just don't pay at all. So the question is, how do you monetize something when inherently people just don't like paying for something, no matter how good it is, unless they're forced to? Okay. Um, actually, one of the strategies uh, was to give what here in Google we call a peer bonus. So we recognize that you did something good at your work, and we give her like a money prize. So basically, I think that I, when Nico helped me move, I felt pretty bad I couldn't help him doing something like that. So I wanted to buy him something. Uh, but it was pretty, uh, I don't know, I couldn't just go there and say, hey, Nico, here, five years ago, here, right? <laughs> so this will basically create a market online of, you know, paying these favors. And it is now, it doesn't exist online, well, just with, you know, vouchers that you can send through coupon, coupon or uh, whatever, buying a book on Amazon. Uh, but, uh, but basically we'll bring online all the payments that you do. Well, Nico, let's just go and have a beer. So I just send him a voucher and then we go and have a beer. At least he already has the voucher and we'll go to have a beer. It's not just, you know, staying here. 